How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Group Mike here. Today we're going to talk about emergency procedures. Some of you may have seen the viral video that's going around. Yet another pilot crash lands the airplane on the highway. Now it's not the first time something like this is happening and probably would not be the last. As long as there are airplanes flying in the skies, chances are we may have these events. But the good thing about this is nobody died. There were no fatalities in this incident. The pilot walked away, although the airplane did hit a car in front of it. But from what I know, the occupants of that uh, car also walked away. But before I jump too deep into this video, let's watch what actually happened. What you see here is a small airplane coming in hot, really hot. And kudos to the pilot for controlling that airplane, managing everything that he did to be able to touch down safely and still stay in control of the plane. I was wondering why the car in front of it would not get out of the way. But I also imagine being on the freeway, it's probably really loud. Or if you're sitting in a very quiet cabin, chances are you're not going to hear a three-ton airplane coming behind you with the engine off. Guys, this is a great opportunity to talk about emergency procedures because this is what this pilot practiced in being able to touch down safely on the ground. Now, as a pilot in training, this is basic skills that you learn early on. Your CFI is gonna simulate an engine failure procedure. And for the most part, all single engine airplanes or small airplanes have the same procedures, there might be some variances depending on you know, the engine of the plane or where buttons and things are placed in the cabin, but for the most part, you follow similar strategies. So this is the simple acronym that you learn as a pilot in training. It's A, B, C, D. Some people stop at just a C, but it's A, B, C, D. So let's go through it. A stands for your airspeed. If you ever have an engine failure emergency, managing your airspeed becomes extremely important. The reason being, depending on the airplane that you're flying, you're gonna have what's called a gliding speed or your best gliding speed. And this is simply the speed at which the airplane stays afloat or think of it as the most efficient speed where that airplane will stay in the air longer and hopefully cover as much ground as needed. So think of your best gliding speed as the speed that buys you the most time. And that's why in your POH, you need to find that number and know it. Know it at the back of your mind because in case of an emergency, you wanna set the nose of that airplane to that airspeed. Keep in mind, when your engine is not running, you're not setting your airspeed with power, you're gonna do it with altitude. So you set the nose of that airplane to the best gliding speed, and then you go to the next step. Also keep in mind that your best gliding speed goes hand in hand with your best gliding ratio. Again, every aircraft is gonna have this. Your best gliding ratio basically gives you the amount of ground that you would cover for each thousand altitude that you lose. For example, in my plane, the Sling TSI, the best gliding speed, 68 knots. At that speed, I know that the gliding ratio is 16 to one, which simply means for every thousand feet that I would lose in a case of an emergency, I would have covered about 16,000 or so feet of space. So in miles, that's about three miles. So for every thousand feet that you lose in the Sling TSI, at 68 knots, you'd be able to cover about three miles. So for a pilot, that really comes into play. You're able to calculate, okay, how much time do I have, depend on what altitude that you're in, and perhaps you can make better decisions that way. Okay, so once you set your speed, you move to the next acronym, which is B. B stands for the best place to land. So once you set your airspeed, you're looking out the window and trying to figure out where is the best place to put this airplane down. You're gonna look for different factors, trees, wires, people, make sure it's not crowded, and try to find as much space as possible where that airplane can touch down and still have enough room to be able to roll on the ground. Now, in this scenario, it's dark outside, and I can imagine for the pilot, his options were like this tiny. And so think about what's lit up at night. That's the freeway. And so if you had an engine failure late at night, Chances are the freeway is one of the best options because it's lit up, you've got headlights from cars, you've also got the road lights, and that way you can see. 
Oftentimes when you're flying at night, the only things you see when you look down are just lights and maybe buildings. It's, it would be really hard for that pilot to be able to see somewhere big enough for him to put down that airplane. And speaking of the airplane, we now know that the pilot was flying a Blanca Viking or Super Viking. For those of you who are familiar with this plane, it's a complex plane, retractable landing gear, so it's a high performance plane. It can go pretty fast. So as the pilot, you know your plane, you know its performance, you know how fast it goes, and in situations of an emergency, these are all the factors that you're trying to calculate and make sure of that you know what is going on. And keep in mind that when an emergency happens, you can have a couple of minutes or a few seconds. So depending on how much time you have, you can make the best decision for you. Then once you find or hopefully find the best place to land, you move to the next step, which is C. C stands for cockpit flow. Again, this is perhaps where for different airplanes, you might have different variances, but for the most part, your cockpit flow is you're checking around your buttons, you're checking around your fuel selector, you're checking around your mags. Make sure maybe it's nothing crazy that made the engine stop. It could be something as simple as you ran out of fuel on one tank and all you needed to do was just switch your fuel tanks to the one with the fuel in it and get your engine back running. And that's why you do a cockpit flow. And once you do that, then you move to the next step, which is D, you declare an emergency. Personally, I prefer D comes first. I've always thought that it's better for you to declare an emergency first and then go about your business and go about finding the best place to land and hopefully put the plane down safely. Now think about what's going through a pilot's mind when they have an engine failure. It's not an easy task because you're thinking about saving yourself, but you're also thinking about different factors and you have little time for the most part, except maybe your 20,000 feet suspended in the air. When an engine failure happens closer to the ground, it's always harder and you really have to applaud pilots who are able to crash land their airplane safely. Also a fun fact, in an emergency, this is the only time that you're allowed to break any rules. Any rules that you've learned as a pilot or procedures, you're allowed to defy it because it becomes a situation of life and death. Your main priority is to save yourself and your passengers, but also, Think about the people on the ground. Again, think of what's going through a pilot's mind. When you're looking for the best place to land, for example, on the freeway, you think, oh my God, there are people driving their cars. Will I hurt them? Will something happen? So it's not always the easiest decision to make, but I imagine when you have such little time, you gotta think fast and just go with your guts. So what are the best ways to stay safe and possibly avoid this happening to begin with? Obviously, as a pilot, make sure you stay current on your skills because God forbid if you needed it in situations like this, but also take care of your plane. If it's a plane that you own that you're not renting, make sure you take care of the plane. Don't skip on maintenance. Don't skip on anything on that airplane. Take your time when it comes to pre-flight. I always preach that. Pre-flight to me is the most important phase of flight. While you're on the ground, take your time and make sure you've checked everything and don't try to rush, don't rush your trip. Also during run up, this is the best time to check your engine flow, make sure everything is working. If you just have one little thing that comes up on your screen while you're doing run up, then you need to take your time and make sure you know exactly what it is. This is why you do a run up. So that way, if your engine is having a problem or a potential problem, you don't find out when you're a thousand or 3000 feet in the air. So I think if you practice good habits as a pilot, your chances of being saved becomes a lot higher. One of the things that I practice personally is I constantly would think of emergency situations in my head. Every phase of my flight, or I would say critical phases of my flight, taking off, landing, and also in the middle of a long cross country trip. So as I'm taking off, I'm thinking to myself, if this engine cuts out right now, what are you gonna do? If I'm a thousand feet in the air, I've just taken off. If this engine cuts out right now, where's the best place to put this airplane down? I constantly paint the scenarios in my head. Same thing when I'm coming in to land or if I'm say 9,000 feet in the air and I'm at a place I'm not familiar with, I say to myself, 
if your engine cuts out right now, where's the best place to put this airplane now? So I will look down. I personally look down and make sure that if something happens, I'm prepared for it. And that's the whole point of painting those scenarios. Not really to scare myself, but rather to be ahead of the airplane because an emergency doesn't warn you. It's not simulated like during your training. It doesn't warn you when it's gonna happen, it just happens. So you wanna prepare yourself and make sure that you stay ahead of the airplane. I hope you guys learned something from this. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if this is your first time with the notification bell on. And a great way to support the channel, go on to mojogrip.net forward slash MVP and become a member. Thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next video. Peace.